A long weekend is just an excuse to get a long way from boring. With models up to 62 horsepower or room for four. Go rugged, go big, go gated. Stop by our dealership for special offers taking place for a limited time. Get great deals and service on legendary John Deere equipment. And welcome to the Georgia Southern Post Game Wrap Up Show. I'm Josh Aubrey, coming to you from Paulson Stadium. Joining me this evening, as always, Matt Yogis, the sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. We're here at Paulson Stadium where the Eagles have walked away with a 42 to 10 ho hum victory over Troy. Not really any big plays, I guess. The uh, only long touchdown was 19 yards, uh, but the Eagles take care of business defensively, playing well throughout the game and offensively. Nice, long, sustained drives. A couple turnovers, but other than that, pretty nice effort here this evening. Yeah, a lot of those seven, nine yard runs throughout the game. The Eagles still surpassed 400 yards, which is higher than their total, just rushing. 400 yards on the ground and I think the big plays came on the defensive side a lot of criticism was set against Georgia State who passed for 400 yards the Eagles gave up 154 total yards to visiting Troy so I think the defense certainly answered some questions there said you know what we could dominate a game too only gave up 13 yards passing 140 yards on the ground were you surprised at all by the way the Eagles bounced back the way they did defensively I'll, I'll say the thing that surprises me is that we talked a lot in the beginning of the year about the defensive tackles, especially Jonathan Battle, Justice Ajiki. Those two guys weren't in the game. We saw Jamal Johnson from up the road in Brooklyn come in, get a sack. The defensive line seems to, it doesn't matter who they put out there, they seem to play really well. They did it again. They got pressure. Troy switched quarterbacks after halftime, didn't do anything to help them, and, and really the only touchdown came in garbage time. The backups were in. Georgia Southern allowed a field goal, just a field goal until about six minutes left in the game. Limited the big plays, but yet the Eagles still rushed for over 400 yards in this game. Let's get out and see some of the highlights from Georgia Southern and Troy. Georgia Southern in their second Thursday night game of the season, this time hosting Troy before a crowd of just over 18,000. The long season getting even longer for the Trojans as on the opening kickoff, the ball will be stripped out and fumbled and the Eagles take over in excellent field position. They'd cash in moments later, Kevin Ellison from the sixth he goes in and it's 7-0 Eagles. The defense shutting the Trojan offense down throughout the game. Antoine Williams with the stop here. Back on offense, the Eagles marching downfield. The pitch to Monte Crockett for a first down as the receivers getting in on the running game. Later, Ellison keeps it himself. Ellison with 99 yards rushing, no Eagle with over 100, though they would rush for 421 as a team. Here the pitch to B.J. Johnson. Another first down. And then capping the drive, Ellison, thinking about the Tim Tebow pass, instead sees a hole and heads into the end zone as the lead is extended to 14 to nothing. Troy adds a field goal early in the second after an Eagle fumble, but here in the second, the Eagles right back, Fabian Upshaw in a quarterback, scrambles, picks up a first down. More from Upshaw, who turns the corner here, gets inside the Troy 30. He'd have 96 yards rushing, capping the 12-play 84-yard drive. L.A. Ramsby in for the touchdown. It's 21-3 Eagles. The defense helps that score stand up. Southeast Bullock's own Jamal Johnson with the sack. And we go to the half with the Eagles up 21 to three. Georgia Southern starting strong in the second half despite a scary moment. James Dean carted off the field, but he was released from the hospital and reportedly is doing fine. The Eagle offense, meanwhile, adds a two yard Ellison score, his third of the game to make it 28 to three. The defense holding Troy in check, allowing only 13 yards passing and 80 yards rushing through three quarters of play. Edwin Jackson will come up with the hit here, closing strong in the fourth quarter. Kevin Ellison showing his elusiveness as he spins out of a tackle. Cuts down the sidelines, picks up a few nice blocks, and fights his way down just inside the 10. 
On the very next play, the give to L.A. Ramsby. He gets the call and goes in for the score to make it 35-3 Eagles. Georgia Southern adds one finishing touch. Upshaw breaking free from 19 yards away. Troy adds a late score, but the Eagles walk away with this one, 42-10. And stay with us in just a moment. We'll have a listen to what Coach Fritz and some of the players had to say about the victory over Troy. 2013 has been a great year for all of us. Got a couple things that ideas. Get out of my office. Yes. Get into TC Outdoors and get out. Hunting season's here and TC Outdoors has everything you need. TC Outdoors, Northside Drive East in Statesboro or tc-outdoors.com. Your hunting and fishing headquarters. It was a good win. We had to come out, play harder than last week, of course. Um, uh, they had a pretty good defense, but, you know, we just it's kind of hard to stop our offense, and we went out there, played as hard as we could, and scored as many points as we could, and we came out the win. We're going to run the ball, come out, play as hard as we can. You know, oh, we got a very good line, so they play real hard, and, you know, we just run behind them big boys and go 400 week in, week out, I guess. An amazing game. I didn't even realize how good we were playing, so I looked at the stats going into the fourth quarter. Um, we were flying around out there. I know people like Edwin Jackson and Deshante Gallon, Quan Daniels, uh, who we needed to back, got back this week. Um, we were just flying around to the ball. People were making plays, and it was really, really uh, ex uh, exhilarating to go out there and play with them. Everybody's so excited. Getting prepared. We get prepared real well. Um, there's a real good scheme. Um, we don't really change too much or put too much in, trying to not make it too complicated for us. Um, it's a good thing because, you know, we're ready. At, we go out there, we're ready to prepare. We know what they're going to do. Coaches have a great game plan, and uh, we come out prepared, and our offense really does well, and we try to match them. And it's an amazing feeling just to be out with your brothers and, and do what you set to accomplish. I mean, throughout the week, we watched a lot of film, talking to the coaches, and we knew exactly what they wanted to do, and we stopped it offensively and defensively. I feel as a linebacking core, we really worked together. We worked in guys. Um, Chris De La Rosa, um, Patrick Flo, Ken Butler, Deshante Gallen, Antoine Williams, all these guys, uh, we can come in and have great communication. And that, that's one thing that we really emphasized during this week, just having great communication, be good with our eyes, and flow to the, uh, to the um, football. And that's one thing we did tonight. The thing about our coaching staff, yes, at times they're laid back, but you know exactly when they're going to cut it up a notch. And it's the same schedule that we, we expect every week. Now, he, he might switch it up a little and say, hey, we're going to be more intense this week. Let's get the intensity up. Coach Fritz, he has, he has a, a knack and a love for energy, and it passes down with the coaches and definitely to the players and senior leaders and guys that step up for the team. And it, it trickles down all the way to the guys playing scout team. And, and we love those guys because they give us a great look th this week. They, they worked their tails off in practice, and we got ready for the game. So that energy, that passion that Coach Fritz brings is spread to everybody. Just as a whole team, it was just a great effort. You know, offensively, Coach Roos did a great job with his play calling. Uh, offensive line did a great job just blocking up front. And, um, you know, those guys were stacking the box, and they were able to get, get a little bit of push for our running backs. And, you know, uh, receivers did a great job on the edge. And like I said before, the defense did a great job. You know, they're, they're led by a senior leader, Edwin Jackson. You know, he does a great job of just – coaching them up and keeping them motivated during the game. You never want those guys just screaming in your ear because that's when you start getting off track. And our coaches do a great job of just making sure that we stay settled in. And, you know, they just do a great job of talking to us calmly, knowing that they're mad. We know they're mad, but, you know, they do a great job of just getting their words across in a way that um, it won't make us frustrated and we just stay, keep our heads in the game. That's the best part about this staff. You know, Coach Fritz did a great job of just getting this coaching staff in here. You know, they're, they're all great guys, great coaches, great, parents, great fathers. You know, they do a great job of just making sure that they, they treat us as their own. You know, that's the best part about it. You know, you treat your own with respect, and uh, we, we respect them. You know, great, great job by our guys today. We're really, uh, I was really impressed, particularly defensively. I thought we played great on defense, tackle well, did a good job staying over the top. Uh, you know, they, they had to drive the field when they did have some success, didn't give up any easy plays. Uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, offensively, uh, sometimes we almost lull you to sleep, you know, or, you put these long drives together. They did a good job of not giving us uh, the big seams and creases that we've had over the last few weeks. And, and so we had to put some drives together. They, they decided to defend us by, uh, 
you know, uh, taking away the quarterback. So, so we had a, give, a lot of give reads. And, uh, you know, and when you get four or five yards, those are fine too. You just got to be patient and take those four or five yards. So great job by our coaching staff, offense, defense, kicking game. Really proud of all those guys. And, and uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know if it was our best effort, but we, we, you know, best game as far as playing it clean. We had a couple turnovers. Uh, during a ball game, we were disappointed in those. Uh, that might have kind of put the game away a little bit earlier, but uh, you know we'll take the W without question. The thing they did the best job of it—they just didn't give up the big play as, as often as we're. You know, it's, it's, you know, I, I talk to you know Doug all the time, Coach Roos. I mean, you know, we just got to remember, second and six is all right. You know, that's okay when you get four yards in there. That's not, you know, and sometimes you get used to it. But I, I think we rushed for over uh, 300. How much? 421 yards we rushed for? Yep. That's pretty good. If the clothes make the man, the surf shop makes him better. Find the look that's all yours. With a wide selection of only the best brands for gentlemen, it can be a very bonding experience. The surf shop at your service. Well, Matt, overall, Georgia Southern comes in. They take care of business once again, still undefeated in Sunbelt play. Next week could be the best team that they've played to this point in the season. They'll get an extra couple days to report prayer for their trip to Texas State. Yeah, Texas State probably with one loss right now, still thinking they have a shot at winning a Sunbelt championship. They love to hand Georgia Southern a loss. I think the Eagles, more than anybody else in this conference, have a huge target on their back right now. All right, well, that'll wrap things up. For now, for Matt Yogis, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again next week.